video is on global climate factors. I'm going to be discussing latitude, air masses, winds, and ocean currents. First, latitude. Latitude is, has to do with your place on the planet. As we know, the Earth is tilted on its axis and it rotates around the sun. It takes one full year for the Earth to go its full rotation, and depending on where it is, it's connected to our kind of climate. Because, depending on its position, that determines what kind of sunlight we are getting. Those areas around the equator, it doesn't really matter where they are around the sun, they're pretty much always getting the direct sun, uh, rays from the sun, which keeps their climate consistent. But other areas, specifically northern and southern hemisphere, depending on where they are in relation to the sun, can determine how much sunlight they get or sun's, direct sun's rays they get and can determine their climate. When the northern hemisphere is the closer to the sun as it's spinning, we have summer because we're getting more direct sunlight. It's not as spread out over such a large area. When we are tilted away when it's we're on the other side and we're tilted away from the sun, the sun's rays is being spread over a larger area, which results in us having cooler temperatures and winter. But in opposite, when we're having winter in the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight. So therefore, they're having a warmer climate, so they're having summer. This is why when it's winter in Ontario and Canada, it is summer in Australia. Winds. Um, the, the winds are moving across the Earth's surface constantly, and they affect our climate because they are moving air masses. And so if we think about the Earth and we divide it up into sections, this being the equator, those winds that are coming from the northern and the summit, southern hemisphere towards the equator are called trade winds. The winds that are mo over um, most of the continents in, northern, in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere are called the westerlies. And it's because they appear to be coming from the west, moving towards the east. It's not a severe, you know, it's not like it always has to come from the west, as we know. Um, but because of our Earth's axis and the way we're angled, um, the winds tend to move from west to east. The easterlies are our polar regions, our polar and arctic regions. And we want to imagine that they're sort of going in a circular motion in an easterly direction. So they go from east to west in a circular motion uh, on the top and bottom of the Earth. These winds are what move the air masses around the Earth's surface, which uh, impacts our climate. So air masses are large volumes of um, air that have a similar temperature to where they originate. And you can have air masses that originate over water, and you can have air masses that originate over land. So when they, are, when they originate over water, they're called maritime, and when they originate over land, they're called continental. And depending on the region where they originate will determine their um, temperature and their makeup. So if we have a maritime polar air mass, so if we imagine this is North America, try to imagine it, I know it looks bad. Um, so we have a, an air mass that originates in a polar region and it originates in an ocean in a polar region. So it would have two characteristics. One, it would be cool in temperature, and two, it would be moist because it was created over a polar region. Uh, sorry, over, a, uh, over water. And with the winds, that air mass would move over our continent and obviously impact our temperature along the way. If it's an air mass that's formed over land, it's called continental polar air mass. So if it was developed in the northernmost region of Canada, the climate up there is very cool, and so it would have a cool air mass, but it would be dry because it wasn't, it didn't originate over water, so it wouldn't have that moisture from the water. So this is maritime polar air mass again. Uh, and then we have a, an air mass that is created in a tropical region, so it's closer to the equator. So if it was, if it's originated over water, it'd be called a maritime tropical air mass, and it would be warm and it would be moist because it originated in a warmer climate and it originated over water. And then the winds would move that over the continent and then it would impact the temperature. Same on this side. So looking at this image, if you think about North America and you think about 
uh, what regions are in the southern United States, you can you can understand why those areas are warmer and why the areas up here are cooler. And finally, ocean currents. So water makes up 70% of the Earth's surface and 90% of the water are cold water currents. The water is so deep that most of the water is cold. The top layer of the water gets heated by the sun and it's considered a warm ocean current. And these currents are, it's a constant flow. It's almost like um, a conveyor belt. It's just kind of constantly moving. And for one water molecule, it could take a thousand years for it to make its way all the way around the earth and ultimately come back from where it originated. So these currents are constantly flowing. And they're con they, they change temperature based on you know, where they go and how they're warmed and how they mix with other waters. Uh, and it's just sort of this constant movement. And as these currents move, they affect the climate of the areas around them. Now, cold water currents are generally always floating towards the equator, and um, warm water currents generally are floating away from the equator. So those are your global climate factors.